Hi everyone, I'm Sophie Lucas. I'm the owner of the Sophie Lucas Property over Gate Park. In this talk, I will talk about the community. I wouldn't just accept it, I'm thankful. Then we talk about how, and in that I'm going to present maybe the design of it. And the goal of this session would be to get feedback from the community, the people attending on which design they see to be more uh, And then uh, I'm going to talk about the current state of the project uh, uh, and what I'm going to do with the execution. So, let's start with the most important thing. So, uh, we're going to get part of the gas security vulnerabilities and we constantly fix them. To apply those fixes for the project, we need to reboot the car. Uh, this is our only problem, but if your car is stateless, uh, and that means if you're running the A workload where you may be doing some networking or maybe doing some CPU bound workloads where it's easy to replace the code, you can just spin up another machine, you can transfer the workload on the machine, and you can just uh, take the load of the machine that is the reboot, and then you can go back. That's the easy recipe for you to should already be doing. Uh, but if you have a lot of on your machine, that means, let's say you're running a small slot where you have like, multiple devices attached to it, then it's not so easy to just take a machine and to just transfer a whole store to a machine. First problem is if you try to do it, you're going to have to somehow transfer to the data on this particular machine and fix a lot of things. And you don't want to spend that time to do that. Another problem is. On the and you just take it offline, that means you're only losing that most for a bit of time, and that means you're losing money. But also, you usually require a little bit of storage, not like a uh, local use case. You have availability concerns, so you have maybe two or three and if one of your replicas is on for a long time, that's a problem. And if another replica happens to fail, that's a real problem for you, and you might face losing the data on the first. So, for that reason, we, we want to make reboots as fast as possible. And one of the ways to do this is to handle the source. Uh, because with reboot, you're spending time setting down the service, you're spending time bringing it back up, and you're probably spending time with me and if it's getting a lot of data in memory, get requests, and it's what you want to say. That you want to be able to take control of your service. And we will be able to hand it across to the next one after reboot so you get security back and you get as little downtime as possible. And while I was working on this, I realized that some folks were working and they also came up with a use case for serial containers and those are long term backlogs you don't control. So it's useful to have a fast reboot, you can use something like uh, this one too. And you can quickly bring those hosts down, bring them back up, and resume the work. And with this handing over memory installs, flashing all that state to this, you can have faster hosts down to those hosts. So, next. So, yeah, so the idea is we would handle the memory over the contract and if you don't want to modify your application to use this new feature that we're going to add, then you can use the uh, three on its own new code. And I actually have some options that do different uh, concepts that you can do. And uh, instead of modifying the application to do this, you can send it to you and uh, it'll do a lot of things for you. There's so many accounts with the wax of using Crew, but uh, that is to be expected. So, then we'll highlight a little overview of how. So, depending on an open channel, you have a process that's causing customer workload. At some point, you get the notification that it's time for the reboot. So, this process, it shuts itself down, takes some time to wrap it up. Uh, it causes this system to be doing it now. We can find the case set memory handle, or we can do anything else if you want. And what it's doing is that a memory is serial list and hands it over to the panel for safekeeping and then it's going to shut it back down. And then we're going to take ownership of that memory, it makes those things that we make for memory and that memory. And then the other panel just comes back and it hands it back uh, memory to the new kernel and then it's uh, the data of the new kernel. 
would need to restore it. Uh, currently, how I do it is via Pietro, which is the sort of process that I uh, uh, showed a few months ago. And the idea with Pietro is before you get back, you go into the whole system, you tell it to freeze the state at that point, and you go to it goes into the hook for hours and whatever the answers register hooks and it takes time to give it whatever step. It takes a step to a binary blob. Uh, the blob is not going to be a some format. And the format is what we ask the developers to agree on what that looks like. It's a contract between them. And once you, once you do that, then when you get back, get so none of the things that you are handing over. For example, the main panel is also uh, nothing connected with it that early in boot we have to but also make sure that we totally are able to pass that information that uh, the right reserved no good space. What can handover happens? The runs up and running. Now it's going to start in the It's going to start in the service. Uh, the process. Back up, now has to discover whether somehow it has some sort of recover and it's going to go to the end with the time us to get the pages back. And when we get the pages back, what we do is we transfer the pages from the old kernel to the new kernel, we are copying them anywhere so it doesn't play. It's only the main data that gets copied around, it's the data that gets handed over and the pages in place are left and right. So we make it very down from the ground for this back and go and solve the over overload into a second. So um, then how can we implement something like that in the panel? There are two ways or two ways that we can to do a few ones. Uh, one of them would be to do a system code. So we would create a system code as an example of code can I draw. The other way could be a file system that provides code test. So an item has been proposed in the past. They, they have an example called DMMFS, we have TestMMFS, PKM, PKMFS, and a bunch of And I assume this conference was already a bit of regarding that. Let's take off on both sides. There is going to be a file system called the file system can do well. And maybe we go through with some examples of how what could look like, and yeah, as I mentioned, a uh, little bit of difference between the, the goals of these five systems I mentioned, like the MSF or PKM, is they're largely meant to be used by local agents or by hackers in order to validate why the GPA actually happens there. But with uh, what they do want to start with the goal of taking uh, over user space country, and maybe we get one of them in which. Uh, let's see how that would look like. So we would create a system called named uh, It can have two modes of operation. So the first one would be before you get to the over the memory to the kernel. And then after you can get to the memory back and uh, resume your workflow. So this is just an example, just to paint the picture of how such thing can be used by the use case application. So let's say we're going to have an operation called time over, and with this head over operation, you're going to get it. Uh, obviously, the range is a memory that you want it to get across, and you would want to give it a key. And this key is evolving because if you have like, the five processes that you want to hand over memory, they each need to know, or they need to know which one is which, and who is asking for the memory. So, I think it's a simple idea. So obviously, there are problems with this object. You don't know what key you want to use, and it's key discovery, but we'll get to it. Okay. And then, for example, you would get to the state, you would create a range, you would give it the reason what you want to say. So, I said to choose a type for each key, because maybe when you write a program or a service, you know, already we can put the key, and it's a thing. So system call. When the system call happens, when it's accepted, these pages 
patrons for the user respect for constant they unmapped from the user process so it can be more accepted and all this scale to handover happens, you get a user process for that, if you want to get these pages back, you do that, you want to call this takeover application, and you also want to again give a key that it originally provided to one to identify which pages they were going to hand over, and that ranges of memory. The interesting difference is with takeover, Something called remap test, and as you can really focus on ideas, you might not want to get the original memory to the original location. So, for example, if I have a piece of page at 0 to 1000, so now you might have something at 0 to 1000, or you want to have it in a uh, So, I'm going to give you a lot of time if it's uh, preloading pages and it comes to anywhere, it has its own uh, memory areas. So you can ask the kernel to take the original memory and what you're taking is that the original item is still on some aspects of your search and it is an end over, so you go that will map the pages into user space. Uh, that is because it moves to the other portal and it helps them to whatever LRU you list and everything. And then it moves on. From there, the process can reasonably like and move on. So, an example code will be done. You just set the base, the length, and the new address that you want, and the same as something else. And the original key, so the key has to be the same because it's a 36 key that is able to find the same. And then you provide the same family, you do the very simple code, and you move on as the memory maximum space. And that means that the new process must know what to call the process. That's very common. You probably want to wait the name of the string. That that will be the same for the computer reference to the right now. And we look at the system that becomes easier. I was kind of about to say the same thing, that the kind of missing a discovery mechanism here that's faster yeah. than actually it takes to get on. So right now, uh, so essentially this is all about anything that we can implement this into you. And we see the list of images that go to the web store, at least for the proof of concept that works, it doesn't really easily be proven, but I had. Uh, naming is a problem that is very how do you discover that you're not using someone else's key and uh, the discovery of what you need to Yeah, and if you've got multiple processes, you know, like multiple um, instances of the same process, then you can't hard code the keys anymore. You have to kind of key distribution thing yeah. you can have to other directories in the file system. But what's the permission model? How do you prevent the yeah. process? With the file system, you get POSIX permissions on your files. Mm -hmm. I really, you know, I'm obviously biased because I'm more of one of the file system approaches. But I really think that you get a lot more with the file system yeah. and need to understand what the system will produce you over the top of the I have I have that uh, later on, so I'll talk about the and between using the file system and this uh, system code. So, uh, I, I'm assuming that you currently only focused on an onion memory, right? Yes. Yeah. Like your applications, how, how would they actually know which kind of memory you can? There. And does it apply to all applications or are you just focusing on one example of a database? Because I mean, as soon as you involve it, something like that, the code would not work in so For now, uh, I'm only focusing on anonymous memory. I haven't really looked at how we can do safe memory. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I would have an answer on how we can do safe memory because I really, really think into that. Probably you could look into using a file system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So then, let's get to the next slide. Exactly that. Uh, another question. I just wanted to ask, uh, so what type of contract could be uh, for us to do for a small phone that uh, has multiple sites for like multiple tasks with the same memory? Uh, do you synchronize that within the kernel when you do game intro, or is that the yeah, ability uh, uploaded to the process? Because it, it might be problematic for languages like Golang, where the concurrency model doesn't match nicely to the internal threading model. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the idea is to kind of do the synchronization and the information about this is okay. So the synchronization will be no. Okay. understand the question, so you're saying like something to like happen. And when you start your application, you have to attach the previous version to the end to be taken So then what you do is basically like some person with the original address that you say for us. And then in rehab address you can give it to the rest. So what you're saying is give me the memory that works in the original function and put it at some point. Does that make sense? Uh, 
but some seafood is very popular option, so I can go to other things. Uh, you can have a file system, uh, maybe something like what you are proposing to get MFS. Uh, we can have it meet both goals. Uh, we mount it to the application, and then what you are trying to do is the same thing we talked about. Open a file table, do an MMAP, do whatever it is, do it, learn an unmap, and when you take back that file, all of the pages are still in the same file. You can remap the file after you get back, and you can do your things again, and you can just move on. And the nice thing with file systems is it's just uh, once a while, uh, you get naming, you get permissions for free, basically, because they're already implemented and they're understood, so problems. So you don't have to do any kind of discovery, but your key should be and give permissions to the users for certain things, and you use the same API in your application for your own use, there's nothing in there's nothing to do. The downside is, for one, you don't get an on because then any access to the same permissions as you can access your memory, which should be anonymous. Uh, you don't have to be traced. You don't have to be traced. If you're a regular file system, you can also take anybody else from a personal file and do anything. Uh, there can be some IT stuff that you can do with some things that you have anonymous memory, then you do maybe a some sort of zero copy splice in the file, and then you do a close select, then come back, then you do a splice again and unlink the file. Quick splice and splice, so it's going to be a little bit simpler to use. So, you have a question? So, ask about this part, I'm sorry. Thank you. Can you do a question? Like an NFT, which are like an anonymous. I just put this where you could communicate in an anonymous file descriptor using some ID or I don't know what, and then just keep working on that. And then you speak, and I'm not buying the security concern that anonymous means that somebody can you know, things. I mean, you have permissions and things like that. I don't know why, I don't understand what the problem is with not having an anonymous memory. Uh, but when the moment somebody else has access, uh, it is also accept all of the when you're using proc spelled nem. No, but no, any other process can do it. Right, but I mean, isn't it a problem that can by permission? Yeah, so, yeah, I think so. So if you maybe set up your processes in the distribution user and think of it, I think it's not good. I have a completely different question. And there is, uh, Soon as you transfer that memory essentially into this uh, safe world, let's put it like that, it isn't still movable. How to manage the memory compression all of those? Uh, can it be used for the process right now? Don't care for the process right now, don't support any kind of moving. But I don't see what you can implement it to The cost for everything you would spend time doing this, so it has to be up for, like, up to be new. Because uh, if you do compression, if you do move memory around, you don't want to spend time, and you don't want to spend time. But I don't see why you can't do that. So, so um, there's a process of time here, right? Suppose so you're running a common on this memory, you have your process that just runs out of the memory, then you have a splice call that turns the electronic memory into a file. At that point, it's just a file in the file system. It exists. It may be a different memory file, but it is just a file in the file system. At which point it can still be moved, though. You don't actually care as much, right? Because as long as the reference is the same to the memory, you're good. As long as the internal process can track that. And then eventually you have the, uh, the case for serialization case. At which point case only to serialize where exactly in the memory all of these downstream data is right. And after that point, you can no longer move. But case O, but case O itself only to take care of that, you would need to go and actually limit that movement out there yourself. But you can. In this case, it's part of occasional creation. You just say, no, I said that now, I don't know how to move. After that point, you can. So, all of that is in place. You can make a move go. After that, once you create the data that you can create, you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought there may be a thing that you have to do with 
your games uh, you you might have more free money you might use to contact stuff so I think you are even what we can implement right I can't say that's the case because I think I don't know what you want to do is to like nested more close with the and everything else but like the, the, the interesting systems are more strict and fast than the restrictions. I mean, for one case, we need to do this, for example, like there are protections that say you can't attack the thing else, you can name space and all the rest of it. You would need to do this, but just trade it for bringing up a couple of files, for instance. I think it would be something useful. So I don't know how much of a big part is in practice for what you would use it for, but um, there, there is a difference. Yeah. Uh, don't say anything. Currently, uh, I have a proof of concept, but for me, it's easy to use, but basically, I have a proof of concept, but 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 I have a proof of concept, I don't see the problem, but I have a proof of concept, 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 I'm a memory to a descriptor or a file, but uh, uh, it also can't happen. Uh, I have some patches of you really happy that I can put in the channel and RSV and the idea is to get feedback and see what uh, implementation people have to and they can uh, announce some patches. I wanted to do a demo, uh, but unfortunately, school doesn't work. Uh, let me give you another one. Let's see if I can do all this kind of thing. Otherwise, uh, maybe someone can do this. I mean, the demo on its own will make a lot of sense. So, people will probably understand just by looking at the video. But, let's see. Let me just locate it somewhere. Is a problem? Um, well, okay, sure. 
um, without pointing at examples. I mean, it's sort of uh, uh, so how do you compare to your competitors? It sort of boils down to like if there's amazing things for competitors, like if you want to do um, uh, stack home filtering codes or if you have to do um, like use the face to make it and so on and so on, it makes this more well complicated. And like if on an API perspective, it comes into like we have multiplexes in the kernel, but like I would say that it needs to be a strong multiplexes. Mm -hmm. There's like if it's two operation that like related but you think like there's nothing wrong with you think burning to numbers for I just wanted to really quickly answer that, like, yeah, um, having two system calls, but you know, that, uh, we change the fact that it's a good uh, like, mm -hmm. if you multiply all your facts that you always lose them. Um, but actually, I wanted to say something different. Um, I also wanted to emphasize that the uh, good concept, in my opinion, is a way to go. Uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, thinking about the kind of resources that we want to pass over, um, there's a lot of stuff that isn't, like, uh, contextual in memory so much, but uh, it's not, like, for example, uh, TPN right? like they are literally files typically getting read, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, from, from, from my experience with this movie background, this is kind of also the data that people want to have to go to KX again, to KX, to KX, to KX, to So um, I really like the file system, and particularly because, like, in this movie, we notice um, sort of a system of the packages of, of, of the lines of the system and then containers and things like that, and, and, and so on. This is really nicely mapped into a file system for people that have, for example, exactly that. So, from my perspective, it would be wonderful if we had a proper file system with directory nesting and things like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a fully perfect one with, I don't know, device nodes and shit, but mm -hmm. uh, if it has directories and files uh, that we can name properly, uh, then this would be really, really nice for us to, to map because we can delegate. Um, Containers and what else we have. Um, so, uh, and the problem that always came is what things that use identifiers, like the linear identifier, the whole this kind of uh, hierarchy of systems these days for different mm -hmm. use cases can bring that to this. And again, um, I also think like if you have files that you want to pass over and these tools that currently write those files in general, you know, like they have very much an understanding of the file system, but they don't have an understanding of uh, calling some special system called doing step in memory management. Right, so um, please, um, to keep the big picture in, 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 mm -hmm. in view, uh, really consider the file system a uh, way to go. But from my perspective, I would love to support it consistently, but I don't see how we could ever do this much with the front file system. Yeah, other comments? Uh, I, I must be missing something about um, why we can't leverage what we do for high speed. Because you don't upgrade the kernel in Hibernate, so you just dump all of the code uh, of the kernel and just bring up the same thing. So right, but can you not dump the kernel, but like have the same process dumping? Uh, the same sort of way? Uh, to some extent, the how uh, does is it stabilizes the state it is turned over and then the new kernel can work. We don't want the disk, of course, because. Uh, Understand your question or? Yeah, no, yeah, okay. that's, Thank you. that's why I was asking. So I went to the session of the morning and I also see a press conference about the handover of the MPU, the personal memory, and the next to the SPA. I do guess we will have a Some people of uh, I think, 
we should stop the next problem. And then we talk about the next problem. I'm not sure what problem is still mentioned. The first one is the shadow method of the server. That's one of our options. So I'm going to show us today very hardly to use the server. You can see Red Hat has found the bug and found many problems and has added to the shadow method. But it's still with us. Second, we have the NVIDIA GPU and the NVIDIA GPU. They cannot uh, shut down and restart the key kernel to turn off uh, the, 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 the particular issue and talk to the developer of the GPU. They don't have a better way. So if this only is on the guest uh, machine, I think this, all this handover is good. If it wants to be used in the host, there will be a huge problem. All the hosts that have the server want to be there on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that, that I agree that those are problems, but I don't think that can be solved at the same time. Uh, uh, because there are lots of problems, but yeah, I think uh, we can get to the fix that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, problems with the problem is the problem. I think the problem is the problem. I think the issue is the problem. But I also have to remove it. I was wondering whether One of the risks or the problems of trying to directly serialize kernel state like we do for Hibernate, you know, let's say you want to just pay for MM strings, is you then, we, if you try to have a kernel upgrade, that, that boundary block is going to break. And one thing that came from the kernel is it doesn't just break boundary blocks, but it could be serialized in the space. So it's really useful for doing uh, big kernel upgrades and then and also to do something like. Allow the process to be sort of into the actual process version, which is also really important. Using this as a mechanism to do big upgrades and big process updates and change the same binary structures is something that we should be careful to continue to allow them. Is it still the same thing that I'm curious about? Because a lot of demand for kickbacks is becoming more common. And 
mechanisms and the DDT is not reliable. And it's not reliable in large part because of how the Thank you. 